Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode seven of Common Sense, and tonight we'll be tackling the home building process and also diving into the real estate industry. And with me tonight, I have three uh, distinguished young men. And they'll be the ones that will basically be carrying the show tonight and. Uh, giving us the answers to some of the questions that we may have. Every dollar make investments. Can't surround yourself with beer, silly friends. Watch common sense with my two Facebook, Instagram, plus YouTube. Some look at it and link with your group. Money conversations is what we do. Gosh. Common sense. You can't be a dunce. I would like to thank. Uh, my sponsors, Lucasaid, uh, M&M Stockage, Rush and Capital for uh, providing me with the platform to educate the Guyanese public. I want to encourage you guys right now to share the live stream with your friends and with your family. Uh, this is one of our most important topics. You know that uh, investing in a home is probably the largest investment that most of us will ever make in our lives. And that requires us to have an extensive knowledge to ensure that this investment is a wise one and we don't make a major mess of, of the millions of dollars that we will invest in a home. So uh, encourage your friends and families to hop on the live. And tonight with me, we have uh, Mr. Stefan John, Mr. Cohen Gittins, and Mr. Christoph Enzo. And they'll be taking us through the program this evening. So to begin our conversation, we just gonna hear a bit about the guest and what they do. And I'm gonna start with Mr. Mr. John. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you do? Uh wow, well, real estate aspect, I mean to assume. So uh, we run the Keller Williams franchise in Guyana. We are real estate agents, brokers in Guyana facilitating the connection of someone with a from a buyer to a seller to, to, to fill that gap to ensure that someone can have a home, commercial property, office, etc. Um, yeah. How how did you get into this? Real estate. Wow. Started doing real estate eight, nine years ago. My maths is correct. Uh, we it was it was true desperation actually. It was through a lot of other business ventures, failure, and my uncle, um, who was in the industry of building and selling, was like, hey man, try some real estate. He took me to, he actually facilitated my first sale, which we sold, a, I sold a house in Queenstown, just the house, not the land, <laughs> uh, where the person was tearing it down to go and um, build something else, just take the wood of it. It was. Um, Thirty-six thousand Ghana dollars. <laughs> My first um, sale facilitated, and and from then we just built on it, realizing what Ghana lacked, and trying to provide services for it. Um, we built our website, and we started representing some companies and individuals and internationals, and started linking with um, foreign governments to facilitate movement of acquisition of property in Ghana. Um, but our main goal wasn't always was, wasn't always is to assist the Guyanese with finding that that home, that place to call home. And I recently saw on social media that you're the, um, the managing director for the new firm that is coming to Guyana. Oh, Williams Guyana. You tell us a bit of how how that connection came. So. Um, real estate in the whole, as I said, we were trying to, we always tried to do what others were doing and, and our efforts started regionally, locally, then regionally, and we started reaching out to internationals and um, it was actually quite funny. So we had a website and we got a call from JLL saying, hey, we have these clients come to Ghana, can you represent them for us? Um, we need X amount of experience this was our second year of real estate i was like yeah man we're doing this for years <laughs> we can handle anything that 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 um client happened to be exon and we um facilitated them in their office and homes again and since then we've been working with internationals and 
last, around December of last year, Keller Williams reached out to us, said they're looking to get into the market. We were recommended by X, Y, and Z companies. And we started the negotiation of the franchise um, to our terms. And we signed in February. And we're launching uh, about the third week of May. Really impressive stuff. Now, Cohen, I know that you're an art architect. Artificial designer. Could you tell us a bit about your journey in that in that field? Well, mine is, is as straightforward as it can be. You study in, in architecture and then you, you would have to, um, well, for my, my, my business is architecture house plan in which we design and, and, and create house plans and, and building designs, building renders. Might be for landscaping purpose, might be for any, anything that has to do with, with building. We facilitated that, that, those projects, and I, I started my own um, my own company in 2017, right? In which we we do um, commercial buildings, residential buildings, um, factories, you know, restaurants, whatever it is, all right. But um, my my vision was to provide the the best designs, right? In across a, a wide spectrum or a wide um, a vast majority of our diverse. Um, areas in which it doesn't only focus on on houses but it can focus on on other on other areas as well all right and um it, it started as, as just to provide affordable designs that would still look good right that, that that can still impress people because in 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 the the architecture market in in most times you you'll find that if you want to get a a good design sometimes you have to to spend a large amount of money Right and and even though my designs would are I I don't want to brag in, 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 at at your show but even though my designs I would say that they they are top tier, right? They still they still you call it as it is, but they still are are, but they still don't break the pocket, right? Because I I try my best to work with the client, right? As as they come in, they, they might have their own budget, because if everybody has in their mind how much they think. A house plan should cost all right so i based on their budget i can be able to provide a plan within that budget because it, it doesn't make sense you design something all right and then after the, the design process has, has ended you can't go and build because you can't afford to build all right so i, I think that that's where I, I i specialize in because i i gotta sell my product yes but i still gotta ensure that after you you leave my office you can use the services that I would have provided. Excellent stuff. Now, uh, our final guest, Mr. Mr. Enzo, is a serial entrepreneur, I would consider, different ventures. Can you share a bit about your entrepreneurial um, journey thus far? All right, so firstly, I don't just generally like business. <laughs> I mean, I need to put that out there because everyone thinks that I'm this really amazing businessman. Uh -huh. I am not. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not saying that to don't downplay myself in any way. Yeah. Why I'm saying that is that uh, my main focus into business in general was to protect myself. All right. So I am currently ventured into many different aspects of business. My love for real estate began when I purchased my first home. And I can give you a perfect example of why I went into the whole aspect of it. And I went as far as the point whereby of doing the physical construction myself. All right. So when I bought my first home, I would have gotten it on a foreclosure from Scotiabank. And um, they would have sold me this property that they're calling so much of money for. When I got inside, it's a complete got through. However, I went ahead and I said, listen, the location matters to me. Everyone is like, how can you assume that this area is going to grow? So the location in question we're talking about is Atlanticville. Now in that area, we are going to currently have maybe five hotels. You're getting the new GRA building. You have Caricom. But you see, the thing is, education on real estate is a very, very big issue in Guyana. And we are not necessarily looking at everything that is important in those areas to actually drive the price up. Okay. You also now just had a new hospital there. You, there's 
the airport is now considered an international airport. So all of these little things would have added more and more value to that property that everyone thought was nothing then. Now, since this topic is based on real estate, everything you should consider when purchasing a property should not just be what you see there. It's, it's something as simple as, okay, if you have a kid, they can just ride around the neighborhood without being, you know, touched or is it secluded or some people generally don't even like peace. <laughs> Some persons would rather live in a neighborhood that somebody wakes up in the morning and play gospel. They might not want to play the gospel, but it just feels good to be home when you wake up and this person is playing gospel. So back to what I was saying, the construction of it, these guys were doing a ceiling for me. Because you remember I had to do an entire gut. So when they were doing it, they didn't have a, what you call a drill. So he said, listen, we don't screw anything. We only use nails. I said, but if somebody has to go into the ceiling to do anything, the ceiling is going to fall. So what I did, there was various back and forth between me and the contractor. And I said, listen, you leave and I became the contractor without any experience, anything. My main, main resource of education in real estate came from YouTube. I know nothing about real estate. YouTube University. <laughs> right? I am a graduate. <laughs> YouTube is worse. <laughs> right? I don't know anything about that. However, the passion and the determination to own my own home and have it to the standard that I would require, also having it to the price I may be able to afford. Because at that time, there's a stigma in Guyana whereby if you want fancy, it means expensive. Yeah. That's not necessarily the truth. I think there's a lot of new initiatives of pushing what you call DUI workers and I, I would advise anyone if you have the shell and you want to learn how to do sheet drop go on YouTube if you think to yourself that the person the contract is charging you too much to put on a door lock and you have 15 locks it's cheaper to buy a drill go on YouTube and figure out how to put on that door lock at the end of the day those tools are still yours and since you're your own homer Having tools is no problem, right? And if you do have a kid at some point, when it's a boy or girl, imagine showing them skills in that aspect. I think more and more, like real estate is like riding a bicycle. It's something that we, we, we strive to have at a very, 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 very early stage. Like owning your own home is like one of your number one goals. Just like owning your own bicycle when you were a kid. You know, so imagine having to teach those principles, not just only to own your own home, but to be able to repair it, to take care of it. Because a home is only a home if you're in it and you're taking care of it. Very important points um, Enzo already brought out in the conversation. But before we um, reach to the end, I want to start from the very uh, basic in terms of the process of acquiring a land. Now, in Guyana, as far as I know, uh, there are three options you have. You go through the Central Housing and Planning Authority, uh, go through a private purchase, or you can go through the judicial process and buy uh, land from the, uh, the court, I believe, or whatever it is. But I'm going to have a a marshal on the program, uh, if not next week, the following week, to talk about that process. But for now, we're going to focus on the CHPA private purchase. Uh, what are some important considerations that person should uh, take into mind when they're, they're going to purchase that piece of land? Location? Um, well, I don't think you have a choice when going through um, central <laughs> housing. No, there, 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 are, are some, yeah. there, there are some options, though. Yeah? Yeah, there are some options. Yeah. There are, there are some options. In my world, I um, I always encourage persons, if they're looking for a land or a property to buy, to hire a real estate agent. You call a real estate agent and say, sir or ma'am, I'm looking for a property to buy you. You pay nothing. Right? They do the work for you, and there's no harm in getting a professional to do that for you. We know we're floods. We know we're good. We know we're bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 
it is I, I I call it foolish of someone to just pick up and be like, hey, I see this property in the papers. <laughs> I go down there, check it out, I want it. Um, we negotiate for you. We we know the comps of the area. We have the resources to get what was sold a mile to the left, a mile to the right, the price points. So we know what you can offer and you're paying up and we are losing. Um, but true central housing. Um, I think the process is you start the application, help me if I'm wrong. Um, you submit said application, um, you do an interview, and Maybe then you you, <laughs> you sit quietly in your corner, you wait. <laughs> there are a few ways that I think that um, you can get it a little bit more simple, okay. owning uh, own your own home, true central. Um, there's a new program I think they have, it's called Young Professionals, mm -hmm. which I think they build. I think that's the fastest mm -hmm. process at that institution, all right? So a part of theirs, yeah? Sorry? Completely they, they, they yes. Them, yeah. And also, if you are a young professional coming from the U.S., let's say you would have went mm -hmm. away and you went to college and you come back and you're basically remigrating, that's another very fast aspect that you can utilize at the central um, housing authority. However, just to add to what Stefan had said, I do understand how important it is for a professional because I'll be very honest, my first experience with real estate has been, has been very bad because most real estate agents, they don't help the customers as much as they should, right? And like he just said, get a professional because I had a saying that my grandmother used to say when we were growing up house is not going to kill me. This house thing and this land thing has always been a very touchy, touchy, touchy topic among families and members and everybody. It's, it's, it's never really a simple thing. So obviously, yes, I think the age that is required by Central is 21 years old. Yeah, Even yeah. if you can't afford it, at the time I would always advise, just go and apply. Yeah. So hopefully, at least you know, but at the back of your mind, listen, this is my goal, which is literally everyone's goal to own their own home. The application is already there, and all I have to do is wait if you don't want to go the private way. But if you also want to go the private way, I would also say do a bucket list. Mm -hmm. A big part of uh, clients in Ghana, they don't always know what they want. And it makes it very hard for real estate, Absolutely. which I'm sure Stefan can contest to. <laughs> right? They don't. They, they just call you and tell you, listen, I have 50 million dollars to spend. <laughs> Find me a place. You know, everything has filters. So if I can filter through the information that I need, that you need, then I can be able to help you in a better manner. So if you have that list, it can be simple things. Listen, like I was talking about the gospel. Some people like to know that it's a gated community, that there's not just a security at the front of their gate, but there's one for the general area. You know, everyone has their own preference, which is perfect. However, before you go into the planning stage, just know what you want. Make a list. The best part of a plan is starting a list. And there's no better memory than pen and paper. Just write down. <laughs> Whatever it is that you, you want, want to do. The rooms, your location, how Even with, you with Mr. Cohen here, like when I started doing plans, I used to do just like what he said. If I went somewhere and I saw that a room made sense, at one time I used to go all the country to tape measure. <laughs> because you remember, I didn't went to school to learn it. So the only thing that can help me is experiences. Mm -hmm. I used to literally go all the country with a tape measure to measure a bathroom to see why is this bathroom working? Why I couldn't have figured it out? And then I would just put together with Google, what is the minimum for this room? What's the smallest a living room can be? And then put the square foot and say, okay, I got 600 square foot to play with to make a house. What can I get out of that? Then I can put a 10 by 10 room. I can put a four by seven uh, bathroom, living. And that's how you would have come together. Now, like I said, even if you come to Koan, you come to Stefan, if you have these little things jot down, you would have your heart's desire. Yeah, Be it makes sense. Right? Because listen, you already given them what you want. All they need to do is make it look 
presentable. And I'm sure by now, Koan is doing 3D designs because that gives you an even better visual representation of what your end product is going to be. Like, I mean, down to the colors of the wall you can pick. It's that, we're, we're at that place. So hiring a professional is very important. But like I said, if you are a very young person, you're not even of age yet, and that is one of your goals, put in the application. It's good points he brought forward, and, and, and to come back to what he said and, and what um, Stefan was saying, right? If, if you're looking to, uh, to, to apply for a land, or even if you're looking to port from a private developer, right? The real estate is, is important, and but it's also necessary for you to know exactly what you want, right? Some, and it's it, it, same thing as I said before, right? Some person, they, they don't know what they want, mm -hmm. right? But they know what they don't want. You understand? Yeah. yeah. And then when you... If, if, if you have in your mind, listen, I want five rooms, all right? You can't go and get a land that's 30 by 40, a small piece of land. Right. You understand? You have to be practical when you're thinking, when you're planning, which is why it's important also to have your list. Listen, I want five rooms. I want seven bathrooms. I want parking space. I want this. I want that. When you, you have this list, you have this checklist or this bucket list, you can then approach a real estate agent or approach a designer or a contractor because you know what you want. So, so based on, on, on your description or on your list, right, you can then be able to, to make a purchase on a land. You can then be able to, 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 to make parts and materials to, to know what design to have. So it's, it's important to have a checklist as well. And it's important to also have professional help when you're going about your design process as well. Absolutely. Stefan, I've, I've heard of instances whereby um, persons may go through private uh, private purchase and at the end of the entire arrangement they lose because they may not have protected themselves legally um, there's issue with the transfer of the land from said person to the next <laughs> could you because a lot of persons that are watching are young people I'll be now at university even now coming out of school, on a very basic level, what are how can they protect themselves if they're they're going I private? <laughs> <laughs> um, we we go out of our way to protect our clients. Yeah, we you never want a situation where a client that you assisted in finding a home has a bad experience, because that's your that's your next recommendation right there so it's part for a petition yeah so we make connections with legal we have a good lawyer we recommend banks that we could recommend we have a list of the interest rates we can walk them through what they will pay if they go this route or they pay if they go that route taxes we have accountants that we recommend that we have worked with in the past and that we're willing to put our head in a block for that will not misrepresent the client. Um, and that's, well, to be honest, that's all we can do to assist in, in protecting the client. Has there been bad experiences? Of, absolutely. You know, people are people at the end, at the end of the day, um, but you do everything in your, your power to ensure that the client is protected, especially when buying a home, man, or, or acquiring a land. You, that's your dream. You, you, you get excited. You go, you go to Cohen and say, yeah, I, this is what I want. I want this color. I want that. I'm sure Cohen has got about 40 different changes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't want the experience to be bad. That's, that's, that's a kill joy, yeah? Basically, from what you just said, because I don't want to assume that everybody knows what exactly uh, real estate agents do, mm -hmm. but you guys handle all of the legal, financial, uh, accounting aspects of purchasing a home. No, we we recommend. recommend. So, for example, when um my friend Enzo here on the show done get call me say, hey, I'm by three houses. Uh -huh. I can, uh, <laughs> I'll do my best to produce a list. So I will say um, I will ask him the specifics. Was your budget? Your preferred location, etc. I create a spreadsheet, a list. I present it to him. He makes a choice. From then, let's say he found the land, found the house, and he's, he's ready to move forward. I can say, we can handle your contract through X law firm. Your accounting, I recommend X. 
your bank, I recommend, well, these are the three banks, these are four banks, this is what they're offering. You make a choice, these are the requirements for the bank for you to get the loan, this is your down payment, and we handle the negotiation for them. The line is $50 million, his budget is 40. We do our best to get to or below his budget to move forward. And he is then free to make those decisions. We're not gonna make the decisions for him. He has the, the list of options of the legal, accounting, banking to use, but if he uses our recommendation, I, I'm sure he'll be protected. So here it is, right? I would like to really touch on this particular issue here because um, it's something that even today, right now somebody getting lick up as we speak it with land. Ooh. Right now. I ain't even gonna judge it. Right now it's happening. <laughs> no, my point is, and what I'm about to talk about here, Facebook. Right? It's a very touchy, touchy aspect of real estate. Now, I would like to advise anyone, it doesn't matter if you are a professional or non-professional, if you're going to approach Facebook, right? One, do not even give a thousand kind of dollars for information. Information should always be free, right? At no time. If you're a woman also, don't go and meet anybody unless you're accompanied by someone. Because the thing is, there's so much little things that are happening right now, we can't even put a proper handle on it, right? Secondly, if somebody does want to sell you something, I would always advise, ask them for that title mm -hmm. or that uh, proof, of proof of ownership, whether it's... Um, Transport title. Transport title. Then there are some people mm -hmm. are selling lands that they can't sell, which they will give you a vocable power of attorney for. Whatever you do, again, this information is free. Ask them for a copy. You go to the registrar yeah. mm -hmm. and ask them to certify that said copy. What that does, the, the marshals there will then go look for that particular original document and certify and verify that yes harry paul owns the property at 11 so 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 there's the first step mm -hmm. once you are secured and you know that listen yes the person who's selling me this land don't let nobody tell me oh my cousin yes if you're going to come next week give me three hundred thousand, and then when you come you can give me the million no <laughs> Unless they name not on any of those documents, that's not the person you need to be dealing with. If you don't feel comfortable again, you hire a professional service to investigate further. Again, not even a thousand kind of dollars should be given. I mean, if you want to buy them lunch, buy them lunch. <laughs> you understand? At least both of you are going to enjoy that. Because if you just give a thousand of information, then I don't, I don't think anywhere in the world in the real estate aspect, you need to pay for information. So I really just want to really touch on that, that do not give any money until you see documents and you, it's not gonna, I, I mean, we are scared of the process in Ghana because everything is somewhat timely, but the money you're going to lose because you didn't have patience, mm. it's not going to be worth it. The court also, I think they might uh, request a fee, a search fee. I am not sure about it. Yeah. But if there is one, yeah. it still is not going to be as substantial as the amount that you will lose should you want to go on the back door. Yep. You understand? Real estate should not have a back door. Because that is where you're going to find yourself in situations that you are crying, literally. You know, real, uh, real estate owning your own home has been such an important conversation in homes. It's like having a proper education. That's how important it is. Because after school, your next thing is to own your own family, own your own home, and have a life of your own. So, you know, honestly, I wish if just like how we're having this conversation here, we can do talks in school. Because mind you, I, have, I had no idea about even the first step of owning my own home after coming out of school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because where, which subject in school <laughs> has the education on starting your life? 
But they don't teach important things. Pythagoras theorem. They don't teach important <laughs> things. Pythagoras theorem. <laughs> there's not one. There's not one. Yeah. So even if there's basic lectures, if it does not, ha- if it can't be a subject, you know, I'm sure that Mr. Matthew can organize something. I will put Mr. Stefan in front of a podium every week. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure. You understand? But at the end of the day, we're all young black people here and we want that when we go into these schools, we can educate. There's, there's two things that I have learned in sports because I was formerly a sportsman, that discipline and education, wherever it's coming from, in my case, YouTube, school, wherever. Once you have those two things, you can conquer so much. Yeah. So, so much. So, if we can educate persons more, because I don't know how much this show is going to do, to be very honest. We don't know how far this reach is going to go. But something like that would be very, very helpful because, like I said, if you can educate someone from young, instead of they coming on the streets and be like, yeah, somebody can give them the ring of roses. Yeah, yo, I don't know, man. This is the first mistake. Imagine you had a savings. You possibly was doing a chess competition in school and you had some money, the government offering 300,000 land. And somebody can come and tell you, listen, give me 500, you can get it tomorrow. <laughs> you saving your whole school life for this money. You don't even, when your parents tell you, go borrow, be on the school trip, you say, no, I want to save the money. <laughs> and your first action to use this cash, you get around. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. Tough. Tough. <laughs> 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 All right, so if you're now tuning in, we. Alive on Common Sense, and we're discussing the entire process of building your home and the real estate uh, industry. And at this point, we want to shift the conversation to, uh, I'm going to ask directly this question to Cohen about the uh, formation of the plan uh, and the process that has to go through now to get approval. Um, could you share about the entire process, when do you actually, because I've heard instances whereby uh, uh, persons get the, uh, they collect the plan, go in for the, um, for the loan, they don't get the amount they wanted, exchange the plan, how exactly do you go about that entire process? And after you get the plan, where do you need to go now to get it approved or can you just start construction? All right, Tom. A lot of people start constructing without a plan. I don't know why they do it. I don't know how they deal with it. But <laughs> um, if, if you, you, you're doing construction or you plan on, on building your own home, but there are some things, there are some prerequisites before you even have the plan. One, you must have a proof of ownership, as Stefan mentioned before, title, deed of gift, transport, lease, anything that shows ownership. You might not be the, the owner of, of the property. You might be uh, probably an offspring. Or you might be the son of, or you're probably a father place or something. You might need proof of ownership or something in writing that says that he has no objection or he, he, whoever owns the place has no objection for you constructing or, or doing anything, right? I wouldn't necessarily ask you for that, but that is necessary in terms of getting the plan approved, right? Now, in terms of after the, the plan has, has been um, completed, you need to take the plan to a municipality, which might be either um, city hall if it's a, a if it's in town, or or, in, or any town. It's, it's usually city council that deals with the approval, all right? If it's in the, the, the region areas, let's say on East Bank or East Coast, then you would have to go to your respective NDCs. The neighborhood democratic council then they would they would receive the plan. If the if the land has outstanding taxes. They would they, they would um ask you to clear up those taxes before they even see a plan, right? Now after 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 that the plan goes through a, a vetting process in which the environmental health officer would then review the plan. They would then check to see that the plan is built according to the regulation. You have necessary setbacks. You have adequate ventilation. The, the plan is has the plan has necessary construction elements that would show that there won't be any damages and, and any loss of life or anything any injury because some plans you, you can look at a plan and know that this plan would not be could not be constructed as it is after you after you after after then the plan goes to the the, the board the NDC has their own their own council meeting it goes to that board that board would then based on the recommendation that the the, the environmental officer gave because they can reject the plan as well 
so they can send it back for you to just correct whatever whatever is there and if, if it goes through the process it makes it to the the board they would then approve that plan all right and then you'll be able to come receive the plan and take it to wherever else you want to take it you might you might you might need funding from a bank or or something because the bank would not accept a plan unless it's it's an approved plan mm -hmm. all right so you can just take a plan to the bank and have them the bank would check for necessary approval now if it is that your plan is a commercial plan or an industrial plan it it leaves the the um, neighbor democratic council and it goes to the central housing and planning authority because they would have to to vet it again because for some areas right based on the nature of the business if you if you have a bar or something some areas they, they don't allow that kind of business in, in those areas so the central the plan would then vet it ensure that it is constructed or you have the necessary pass or approval to construct whatever nature of business you have then they would then take it to their board as well and then uh, if it's if it's approved they send it back if it's not approved they reject it and the that, the, the process in terms of um central housing that process is a lengthy process because you know plans come from the entire country plans come from region 10 region 5 region 4 right so that process is, is much longer than uh, the the original area because on, on, on a whole if it's just an ndc you might see probably 100 plans at, at, at the end of a month but central housing, they might see 10,000, right? So that process takes a, a longer time. But after the approval, then you can proceed to take it to wherever you decide to get funding from, whether it's a commercial bank or some agency, right? They would, they, they would most likely would check to see if you have the necessary approval. After then, you can then proceed to a contractor. And um, I don't know if that's part of your program. I don't want to um, go farther than, than this. But, after, but then... <laughs> Uh, but, but then the contract would then be able to build based on the on the approved plan. Many many persons are spoken about terrible experiences with contractors. Uh, I think even when I posted this flyer, somebody made a comment about uh, some difficulties they had constructing a home. Contractors' prices changed every day. Uh, they were in discipline and a bunch of issues. Now. For a first-time home builder, uh, how do they go about, and what are some qualities or factors that they should consider when now selecting a contractor if they want to go down that route? Uh, well, um, I know Enzo. He's yeah, he's had several contractors, but <laughs> <laughs> when I, I I um I for me, right? It's it's very difficult to find people that are that are honest. In any in any business or in, in any facet of, of, of life, right? You, you might jump in a car, a taxi. You you're not even sure if this man is a rapist or anything. You you gotta trust that person, but you still gotta be smart, right? If, if you're looking for someone to build, you remember your, your home, right? It's a, it's a lifetime investment, right? You, 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 you first need to be patient. You can't just have somebody say, hey, this man is a contract. You build two three houses. It could build your house for you. Guess you understand? Exactly. Like exactly like <laughs> Listen, you don't even. You gotta be patient. Exactly. <laughs> you don't walk through people. You don't walk through people's house. You don't even. Yeah. Come by this house and show up. Exactly. Yeah. Show up there. You got even man saying this man build a house for me. Oh, open your doors. I walk around you whole house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> open wow. every door. It shouldn't be like that, right? Mm -hmm. You are spending money that you've worked for. I hope, right? Money that you've worked for that you've earned, right? If even you're spending a dollar on 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 on, on e e construction, it, it must mean something to you, right? You must have value for your money. Now, what that means, right, is that you should vet these contractors, right? Go through the process with them because if they're not patient with you for, for you to review their work, right, then don't have them as as your contractor because they have to build your house for you 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 gotta have it the way that you want it and most times you see contractors they want to tell you what you should do right how you should build your house and it's good to have advice but they should be able right to advise you to say what's best for you so that you don't lose your money so when you're looking for a contractor now right ensure that they have done work before ensure that they have at least five references i would recommend persons that living in houses that they would have built and ensure that you go on sites right and you actually have a visual impression of the work that they're doing and based on on your your interaction with them right if it's if it's a bit too off 
just take a step back. If they seem a bit too sketchy, right? They don't answer in the, they're not answering the phone or, 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 or they tell you you're gonna meet you at one place and then they come with some excuse. Those are things you gotta look for, right? Because you, again, you're spending your money. You gotta have value for your money and you gotta, and you gotta be, be honest with yourself knowing that, listen, man, it's my little too sketchy, mm, right? Process. Exactly. Be, be honest with yourself and then... The patient process. You might be more looking a little too sketchy while you're, you're giving me your money. Mm. You understand? Hey, one bill well, quick. Well, here, one here. <laughs> I, just to add to this, right? Uh, contractors is a very important, very, very, very important aspect of this entire thing. What I would advise to do, again, um, hire, pay some money for a professional opinion when it comes to a contractor. I agree. So I agree. we have an issue in Ghana whereby we like people to show up without a fee. Mm. Firstly, to me, if you're going to hire someone, say, so listen, I need a consultation on a new building I would like to do. However, I'm paying you, even if it's a $5,000 fee, I don't know if you have one, but this is your fee to come. It's the first step to me. The thing is, automatically right there, that contract is going to respect you. Okay. That's one. Now, I would also say to have at least three. Go through everything with each one of those contractors, list by list. And yes, of course, have a list because you can get ring of roses and you don't want that. So having said that, you also, I would always recommend that when you do get that plan or those estimates, from your various persons, compare them. Mm -hmm. Take a day, a simple day. Pick up your phone, call Cafours, call National Harbor, find out if there's a price for a sack of cement. Find out how much stone is really sell for, in it low times and in, it, and in the high times. Go around to everybody. Even if you need to want to, having to do it yourself, no problem. Then some persons don't have the time entirely, but again, you can also go to an independent construction firm and say, listen, I have an estimate that a local contractor gave to me, and can you review to tell me if he's making sense? Mm -hmm. Some people like Nabi and all of them, they, you can just go with the plan. You don't even have to ask them to build it for you. Mm -hmm. So listen, yeah. I have a plan here. This is the plan, and this is the estimates I, were, I was given. Do you really think that this is going to work? Mm -hmm. Then there's also an estimation that banks go by per square footage mm -hmm. on how much they think that this land is going to cost. So let's say a contractor give you a plan for 40% less than what the bank say can be. Nope. <laughs> no. Because what a contractor usually does, they lowball in the, yes, the, the estimate the to draw you in and then blow you up. So what I would always advise, whatever estimate you receive from a contractor, mm -hmm. add 30%. Minimum. If you could go 50, it's better. But how keep even if you don't have the physical cash, ensures the back of your mind that there's a possibility here that this person is drawing me in. Listen, that's business. And I really can't blame a contractor too much of that. Because it's just like somebody wanna sell something for 500 is tell you $499.99. It's the same thing. They're not gonna give you a bad cent. Right? However, that's to draw you in. And I understand that many contractors do so because they feel the need to mislead the customer in some way to get the job from them. But like I said, choose more than one contractor. Even if you can, if you have the resources, take it to a professional engineering company to have them review it because those engineering companies are doing this every day. Whether they're doing it via tenders, wherever they have sheets upon sheets upon spreadsheets that they can give you numbers like and that's all you need you need to be able to secure yourself mentally because listen building a home is very mentally frustrating imagine every day you go and you see somebody like i'm gonna hammock and eat your house <laughs> and he tell you that he just he just lying down a little bit and then he's supposed to finish work five o'clock about four thirty washing off his hand <laughs> He taking more long to wash off his hand than when he was doing the compound. Taking half off wash off his hand. Yeah, half an hour he said. Hand. And then they can tell you, oh, oh the is a good thing. I remember when I was building in Providence, he used to tell me, we can't left after 4.30 because of the traffic. 
I said, sorry, I have nothing to do with me. I said, what you need to do, let us create a plan. Well, I'm a business person and I like everybody to grow. So I have a rule. You, compl- you complain about transportation, now we go to Jaila. You buy everybody on motorbike and you come out your salary every month. <laughs> so you can't come and tell me you got transportation issues. Because if you want us to be a team, we cannot, if I'm to take your job to build your house to match you, you working hard, so hard to give me this money to build this house. And I over in 4.30 from work. By the time I reach to me, walk side, me walk side, clean. Nobody at work. When a homeowner or a to-be homeowner visits a site and they see people working, they just go and borrow money. You know how nice it is? There's more money for the contractor, but you don't know that. It gives them security too. It's make them feel so nice, just go home and sleep. Yeah, As a contractor don't know is that if the customer is just even mentally happy, they don't even need to be there, how faster that job goes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's important, two things you said, which, which, which I think is important. The, the last part in which, even though you're paying a contractor, you still gotta go and check your site, you know. You gotta ensure that, uh, again, you're getting value for your money. Common sense. You gotta use the common sense. And sure you're getting your value for money. The other thing is too, right? When you would have already selected a contractor, even before you select a contractor, ensure you have everything in writing. Yeah. Right? If you gotta pay a lawyer, don't don't be afraid to pay a lawyer to draft up a, a contract because it's a contract you have to have a, a legal binding contract between this person. That listen, if this estimate is fifty million dollars, right? We're going to work at fifty million dollars. Because in an estimate, there are contingencies, right? Or we call miscellaneous, right? Mm-hmm. Miscellaneous should be a percentage of the, the total material and labor cost, right? Which should cater for any discrepancies or any, any, any changes to, to whatever you, you plan on doing. Because you, you might plan on buying five bulbs, might end up buying six, right? So when you have a, 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 a contract, a written contract, if that contract is not willing to sign on to that contract, then yeah, don't take the him to. to yeah. yeah. So just don't to, 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 just to, to mention this, right? Um, the contract aspect is very important. However, that's why I would have recommended early in our conversation to add 30%. Because also, you can't blame a contractor for inflation, mm-hmm. right? Now, the 30%, most people who do contracts and estimates and stuff like that, it has a 10% miscellaneous. Yeah. Most, most of them. Why I'm saying 20? We're pretty much still in a pandemic, even though we somewhat ignore it. Then Ghana also, since we're here, is also moving at 400% economy growth. We may not see it because not everyone is really out there. But that is an issue. Because sometimes I can tell you this, stone is come 9 o'clock in the morning, midday at 2, see it finished. Done. If you got to go somewhere else, you might pay 12000 per ton, when you would have paid 9000 at 2, see. But guess what? You already already the ransom tomorrow. You already got the workers. The weather looking good tomorrow. You can't cancel, you got to pay the 12000 just to get the work done. So I'm saying 10% to me is too little. Because Ghana is no longer in the place that it was before. You can't just walk in a store in Ghana when it comes to construction material and say I can buy everything in one place. No. The containers come today and somebody's collect the whole container just to do one building. Mm. Guyana is growing. Infrastructure is our next major, major, major improvement. Look how many new roads we have, highways. The average person in Guyana owns their own home. As I'm, I'm actually proud to say that. The average person, look, you have diamond housing scheme, you have schooner, you have these areas that would have become so populated. Imagine, that's why we have, obviously, the confusion in the mornings and the evenings on the East Bank and so forth, because so much persons were so delighted to know, I could own my own home. Right. And they would have been contented with the issues of traffic, just to show how important it is to be in my own home, right? So I'm saying like that thirty percent is very, very essential. If you can raise, if you can afford it, to put aside even more than thirty percent, I can guarantee you will have a proper home from start to finish. No, but you still shouldn't um 
I, I hear what you're saying, right? But 20% is, is a lot of money. If if you have, and, and I'm talking about inflate, in, inflating the, the estimate that you already provided. I'm not saying because well, things, are, are, things are not the same when you start from the force of the construction yeah. to the last oh, yeah. thing. Okay. All right? Construction price go up as well as material costs go up. But if, if, if you have $20 million in your house and you, you, you decide that's $20 million you're going to spend, all right? And then you, you inflate the cost by 10% now, so you end up paying what? $22 million, all right? And then you go up another 10%, you end up paying $24 and then $26 million. That's an extra $6 million coming out of your pocket now, all right? And for some people, it's nothing because they already prepared for it. Yeah. Yeah. But for the average homeowner, all right, the extra $6 million, they might have it to furnish the house. True. You understand? To, 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 to do the gate, right? So to do something. Here's a so what, I'm, no, no, what I'm saying, right, is that you, where you, even though you're catering for the prices to be inflated, I don't think the term, the term percent is, is a bit too high for me personally because I plan on spending $30 million on my house. And to know that I spend an, an extra 30, and my, my, my estimate is going to be inflated by an extra 30 million, mm -hmm. or by an extra 30 percent. It's going to be difficult on me if I already have plans or, or if we have already agreed to a particular price and those and the contingency also have a particular price. All right. So you don't necessarily have to spend the 30%. The 30% is just a... Yeah, it's, it's, just a yeah. it's just a security for you. Because listen, I know of people, right? They had an estimate. The house down the middle don't even have a toilet. <laughs> what the, 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 bedroom, the bedroom don't have doors. They just put a blind because the contractor spent any money. These, listen, I have first hand experience with these things. And also, let me give you a, a sweet part that nobody don't talk about. When your house starts building and looking nice, your taste has become expensive. Not as far as this part. Listen, you had in your estimate, you'd have put just a normal scope light. All of a sudden, <laughs> you see a nice chandelier you like. <laughs> you can't make but then you can't make contract to them. No, no, I'm just saying, but yeah, it, 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 all comes comes back to, <laughs> it all comes back to that same 30%. Yeah, whether yeah, yeah. your taste becomes expensive it's or true, true. if the, co the contractor needs more funds to provide to your needs. Yeah, because yeah. let me tell you something, another part, which nobody don't really talk about. 90% of all lands given by the current government is mm -hmm. in no shape to build. I know there was a part of the, the program. I wanted to speak, to speak in that same thing it as well. No shape to build. Because I actually own a land and I've never seen it before. <laughs> you understand? I've never it seen it. It is in no shape to build. The money. Oh. <laughs> most as most contractors do not do or do not put a clearing fee in them. Mm. They give you a building fee. Mm. The yeah, first yeah. day, imagine the first day you go, you don't even know there's supposed to have what you call. This guy would come and put down the pickets to mark out your, your, your land, right? Yeah. And then your contractor will come and do out your building, whatever, whatever. However, 90% of the time, there's so much a bush on your land or a flood. And then when they knock you out of 500,000 now for clear it? It may be more. What? Clear it and like sand fill it. Yeah. What? So we right away, there's your 10% finish. You ain't even start. <laughs> this is my personal yeah, yeah, yeah. experience. I'm telling you, like, yeah. When I've seen these things, I said, man, how do I just pay so much money for this land? It goes back uh, to what you were saying about hiring a professional because these yeah. things you won't know as a, a first-time home buyer. So definitely getting a professional because they've seen <laughs> it all. Come and hire Enzo. Hey, I'm <laughs> buying this land here, chap. I see him on this show. Come help me with me. No, it's very oh, important yeah. to know everything you're getting in yourself too, because I like uh, seeing once you start it, consider it finished. Yeah. Which is a very good mentality to go into anything that you're doing, whether you're building a home, business, life, whatever it is. However, just having a little backup. I mean, it's like we're all men here. I think it's why we all want a wife. You know, for a backup, we just need, we cannot be in everything alone. Life is designed for two, for everything, literally. We have good and bad, male and female, different type of speed. Everything is basically in two. Yeah, support system. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's how it is. There's support in everything. That's why there's two. You have asked yourself, why somebody got three parents? I mean, people have three parents, but it's really two. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? So I would just always recommend, you know, putting aside as much as you could. So, so even, even though, you must have your own contingency. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You must have your, even if it's not it in the contract, sense. even if right? it's not in the contract, you you know, your grandmother used to get a little pocket change. Oh, yes. Mm. Mm. You know, I grew up with my yeah, grandma. Yeah, she yeah, always yeah. always have this little extra money. <laughs> she said, listen, she give you no money. Hold on, find peace. <laughs> you always know you get somebody you could get this little backup from. Yeah. And talking about uh, couples, couples also can qualify faster for a loan, a land, if they go together. Multiple incomes. Once yeah. they have a multiple income. I don't think yeah. a lot of people know this, but it's very important. Don't feel scared. You can go with your partner to approach every aspect of the system of a uh, building, uh, ownership, mortgages, everything. You can go as a couple. You don't necessarily have to tug it out alone. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I think that's an important point. I think we, when I had an earlier session with couples, we we touched it, um, but it's always easier to build when you have that support system. And it's also easier in your pocket if you have uh, two incomes trying to uh, tackle the issue. Now, recently, I've seen a few debates concerning uh, whether somebody should go to the bank to get a mortgage to bill or suck it out from their personal expenses. In Guyana, <laughs> a lot of persons are <coughs> risk averse. As soon as they hear mortgage debt, negative things just come to their mind. Um, because of probably whatever you would have learned during our childhood days, or I don't know why, but we have a general risk of our society. In, in your personal views, what would you advise somebody who is um, now thinking about buying their, or building their first home? Should they go to the bank get a mortgage, or should they step-by-step, piece-by-piece, build from their own pocket, considering also some of the factors that you've mentioned, inflation, uh, whether the, the value of that investment, if you're going through your pocket, uh, because of inflation, might very well end up being similar to the interest that you pay on a mortgage, uh, what is your personal view on, on that entire discussion? So, that's a very good discussion, by the way. Um, I think some persons are able to do it on their own. But here's what is the issue here, Matthew. The bank. <laughs> People love the bank, you know. <laughs> but then they're asking for your DNA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is what is pushing customers away. And I honestly, I wish, I hope somebody is from the bank listening to this. Uh, program right now. You cannot ask me for my DNA and expect me to want to come back. All right? Then the information today is be a list. Yeah. The first day. Yeah. Then you come back, this ask for that certificate of your cat. Yeah, actually, that's that. <laughs> some, um, some they don't want to know when your, your, your yeah. daughter cabbage patch doll that you buy if she when she was five. Well, they had a signature. What was the signature? Mm-hmm. You need to make this process of getting a loan well, simple. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that people want to use their own money. They just don't able with this frustration that the bank, every time you go to the bank, they need a new document. Sometimes, to be very honest, misinformation is the reason why people want to tug it out and just yeah. go through the pocket. Yeah. It's not the bank is wrong. The bank might give their, their loan officer a list of requirements. Uh-huh. Then... I can tell you what the bank is, the, the loan officer. They take off what they think you should bring. Then when they got this information now, they can call you back the next day and say, oh, you was to get this one. <laughs> Some people lose a job going to a bank and going to central housing. Mm-hmm. Because they spend three, four days at this one place and they get no progress. Yeah. This, this simple idea here, if, you really, if they really want Guyanese people to own their own home, yeah. make it more simple. Then, why is it with the fastest growing economy in the whole world, we got the highest interest rates? Yeah, that was why. That was a, that was a big man there. We were, we, yeah, I know, I know. I was going to say that, though. I was going to say that. Yeah. Ridiculous. 
Mm-hmm. No, what I would always advise, which is a financial part of it, give me an interest rate based on my salary. So fine, the government like to come and say, listen, we can't afford to raise your, um, your salary. No problem. That's fine by me. Now, I love an initiative that you just did. I think there's no longer VAT on cement. Mm-hmm. Right? That's an amazing, amazing thing. Now, we'll, I mean, it's not a whole lot of money coming off, but it's something that can go to something else. Now, with the interest rates and stuff like that, let's say I'm earning eight thousand Ghana dollars a month. Now, Central Housing is selling me a property, a land for three hundred thousand. Let's say the fifty by a hundred. Obviously, I have a family to support, so all of my money can't go directly into that. They should have a, a system or like a spreadsheet that they can calculate a formula based on your salary so if i'm earning eighty thousand, maybe my percentage should only be two percent interest if i'm earning two hundred thousand, maybe my percentage could gonna be five percent and as you earn more think that way the banks will have customers they don't even have money to give because that now encouraged me it means like me being when I'm a small man, a middle man, a rich man, I have a place and I have an option. All everybody wants when it comes to home ownership is having the option to own the home. You understand? And having that system becoming what we call consumer friendly. I wouldn't lie to you, our system is not consumer friendly. To add um, a lot to there, you gotta defend the banks a little bit. So Guyana has... Um, one of the highest non-repayment issues with persons who are buying and the interest rates um, reflect on that. But the downward could be low. Sorry, it, it definitely could be lower, much lower <laughs> than, it, than it currently is. The issues that we have with the banks is a, a lot of these guys are robotic. They, they you, you go there, you don't feel welcome. First, you gotta wait two, three hours. Or if you go to a certain bank that now has a, an appointment system, you gotta, wait a week for an appointment that don't happen, they don't call, and if you got to go back into the bank, wait on them, remind, everybody remind them on the appointment they set, right? and, and, they for you. and then they give you this two-page document you got to bring in. And they don't, as Enzo said, they're, they're not welcoming. Right? They will give you a document, sit there in this robotic, and they will read it out. And you, 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 you're meeting with a stranger, mm-hmm. and you're literally giving them personal information about your life, your finances, your job, your expenses. And they're sitting there in this nonchalant um, way that they generally operate and they turn around and say, oh, you got to write a life insurance. And, and they, some can be very dismissive to you. Oh my gosh. You got to write a, uh, you got to do a life insurance and yeah. be beneficiary. <laughs> what? <laughs> I got to literally sign over my life. You say, if I die, it's not my wife, it's not my kids, it's you. Yeah. Right? And it's, if that's the policy, that's the policy. But there must be ways that you can, you know, change this persona and make it a little bit more welcoming or, or explanatory so people can feel safer or, or eager to, to want to approach your bank. And then the process in time. You call an agent, you find a land for you, I find a house for you. <laughs> you begin negotiation. Even if you go and get pre-approved by the bank, you're pre-approved for $20 million and you submit and you say, I find this land and so on, buy this land for you, go on, buy this land for you. 20 million, you want to get 18. And you go to the bank, you got to wait four weeks. More. Minimum. And it's, and it's already pre-approved. For that man to say, yeah, very nice. For that man to say, all right, good. For them just to say, we can get the money, you know, they got to sign the paperwork. <laughs> you feel them out of $18 million waiting around. The next one will come with cash and gun. Can't eat your dinner. But does not that's consumer, what we have to do? Is it, friendly it's not. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. If, if it's more friendly and it's more approachable, mm-hmm. more persons would go to it. To be very honest, and that's why you have that issue. What you mentioned, where people yeah. put in down money to hold it, mm-hmm. hold a three hundred thousand dollar, hold a five hundred thousand until I get this approval. Because they know the system. They know the system slow. Just so slow. Everything it's pressure. Goes. It's pressure. You know. Um, Here's a, a, a part that I always like to tell everyone. Ensure you go to a reputable insurance company for mm-hmm. fire. 
all right i mean this is something that we don't we we, we try to polish it off in most times um, i don't know if the new uh, building plans need to have a sprinkler in your building but i would always say yeah something like that but what i would always say to be fair if you can as an own homer ask your plumber just to run it if it's just one pipe in your kitchen mm -hmm. and see if you can't afford it i know a lot of plumbers here are not very versatile in doing the sprinkler system if you can't do a sprinkler fine give them a handle just to turn on no, but you should, you should get a, a, a plumber with, who knows to do that kind of stuff if, if you gotta pay an extra <laughs> that'll pay the extra right but i'm saying even if you like i said remember now it would always come back to the cost yeah yeah right so even if you could you could just put in one pipe mm -hmm. just a single one and it can't be fancy buy a regular shower here from the chinese that got the that is just <laughs> open it don't matter it don't need to be fancy insurance you but you just need it remember that the insurance will only pay back for so much mm -hmm. and then you have to start all over so if you have that and you just run in the kitchen because you forget we're human beings things happen all right things happen no matter how you try to twist it and turn it it's going to happen at some point so have a reputable company don't i don't really recommend people to go through insurance brokers they got people that don't really they're not the insurance people they are brokerage of the insurance and they push you around so much i've had the personal experience on that and I always say, listen, just go where you're comfortable. Everything comes back to where you feel like you being a consumer, that you're valued. Even if it's at the beginning of that conversation, because mind you, that conversation is going to be had if something happens. And if the beginning it ain't nice, it's not going to be nice at the end. And now, guess what? At this point, you're now frustrated. You're not now going into something entirely new. All right, so imagine being frustrated without a home, and then the insurance person will tell you, "Oh, we it when we we the, we inspect this building, it didn't pass the inspection, but we forgot to tell you." <laughs> as simple as that, some just didn't tell you. Your plan wasn't approved at some point, so technically we can't give you this money for the insurance because your plan didn't even approve for this building properly. They still had a room that you never edit. But your husband bill because you remember now you as a homeowner you just take a mortgage mm. you can't wait until the plan approved you want to live in your house you're paying rent and then you go to the insurance and the insurance tell you oh the one room didn't approve then sure that wherever you go to get insurance and these kind of things you have detailed information it's like i will be I, this is not this is like a bit off topic but do you know that insurance companies in Ghana? Your windscreen is not a part of your insurance. Yeah, there is a yeah, separate yeah. insurance for the windscreen. Yeah, windscreen yeah, insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Windscreen. I don't know if the windscreen not attached to the car. <laughs> yeah, That's a perfect example of how yeah. insurance companies work. So I'm saying, make sure that when you have that first initial conversation with that, you feel comfortable and you read every little detail how you're protected. Because with your own home, if you're not protected, because again, remember we have kids, this, that, something must happen. Even if it's a garage burned down, even if they give you back half, it's better than because starting over is never easy in every single aspect of our lives. One thing that I, since we're on insurance, um, in, in cases whereby contractors um, might be building and some negligence Safety happens. Safety concerns. Yes. Um, are contractors, uh, are they, do they have some form of insurance or? You. Safety? Most of them do not. No, but you're supposed to have, or you're you should have, have, you should have construction have. insurance. So okay. each one of your workers, you need to have the NIS, GRE, everything for them. But what is the issue that we're having right now the only time somebody going to put on a high vest is if they're working for Exxon. If you tell uh, the same person who's going to work for Exxon, come by you and put on a high vest, and I helmet, you're not putting it on. Because your name Exxon. Now, we have a mental issue for safety here. <laughs> we think we're just inferior. Like, we just could do as we like, and nothing's going to happen. Me, personally, I'm not a contractor. 
I consider myself more of a developer. And I have three different types of safety boots. I would go to work if I'm doing a property and I have it in my vehicle. Even if I'm doing a side visit, I go, it's something as simple as that. Now, what I would advise homeowners, if you are hiring a contractor, you put it in your contract that you need to take care of any incidents yeah, while you're not responsible. doing my yeah. job. Because you cannot leave that on the customer now. The customer can go and put somebody in a taxi, drop hmm. them here, no. And I would always advise, even I'm also into logistics, I have a first aid kit hmm. in every vehicle, company vehicle. Something simple as that, you don't need to have a whole lot. Yeah. But as far as it kit is a minimum of three thousand dollar guys, I think at an average pharmacy, have a first aid kit in the vehicle, mm -hmm. or tell you put it as a requirement. Tell your contractor, chief, if you don't have a present first aid kit kit today, you can't work. Mm -hmm. If everybody not wearing at least a long boots, if they can't afford a safety boots, you can't work. Yeah. Because mind you, I am superstitious. I don't know about everybody. I don't want no bloodshed on my side. Me going to live, if something happened by place, when it did it, me going to live there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes back to Guyanese are generally reactive instead of yeah. being proactive. Absolutely. Yeah. So they're going to wait until the issue yeah. arises, and then to put certain measures you in place. You never know you need to say, people say you step on the nail. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> now you're, you're not got force. But even if it's a long boots, just... you will be in a good place. Yeah. Because as simple as people don't think, guys have some very good long boots. Yeah, man. You understand? And like I said, a long boots is about 1500 to 3000 Even if you can't afford safety boots, because a, re a really good safety boot is 20000 plus. And most laborers are only paid around... 25 USD. Uh, the owner should or, be on the contractor though. Like I, I, I don't think safety should be an option. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that <coughs> it should be if or or. It, it must be a requirement because the downtime on your construction should someone get injured is yeah. on you. Yeah. You're bound to get wired up. No, but you, you as, a, as, as a person, you got to buy your own personal protective equipment as well. right? If you go into a site right, and you know that you, you're going up on a roof today, Right? Why you can just go up on the roof and, and no harness, no no helmet, no, you just going go up on, on the roof. Go on, listen. You gotta protect yourself. And you think it's right? Everybody's think everybody think they're invincible until something happens. <laughs> yep. A man might might be drinking and driving every day, every night he's drinking and driving. Nothing happened to you. See, he, 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 he floss and just continues. Yeah. Until yeah. one time, right? Yeah. He, he gone, he, he knocked down somebody's child or something. So uh, so you gotta protect I yourself. Do this. I right? do the... Before something happens. I gotta tell you something else, right? Seven years <laughs> you might spend working on a site. Mm -hmm. Never had an injury. Right? Never had an injury. And then one just one day you go and break your foot or something. Imagine if, right, for, for the whole seven years you are wearing the, the portion protective equipment. And you one day you want to. And you one day you don't wear it. It's when you go and get injured. It's a hell of a thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's a funny thing. Yeah. It's a funny thing. <laughs> no, but what um what is an issue that most persons have, workers? Mm. Majority of the uh, labors that we have in Ghana are usually high school dropouts and most of them would turn up to work sites and um, sometimes they don't even have lunch money to be very honest. Yeah, that's a fact. So what that's I would always advise persons to do, I mean, it should not be their concern. Yes, they should come with their own protective gear. Mm -hmm. But if you want to feel comfortable to know that things are doing well there, you know, I have done it many times before. I went to different stores. I, some guys come, they don't even know anything. You know, I would buy them a hammer, this, that, that. It makes your work go faster. Exactly, yeah. because it's, it's a short long time again. Because if, if, if you buy it for you them, you, buy it. <laughs> you so can buy it for them. The thing is, yeah. they might not agree for you to take it out of the salary, mm -hmm. but just look at it as your property investment. Yeah, yeah. Don't look at it as, oh, I buy anything for workers. <laughs> Don't look at it as a naive aspect like that. And they will also give you extra. Yeah. One or two days by lunch. Yeah. You understand? Just do the little thing because what they're doing for you is creating your future. But it goes back to what you said about the contract. You know, the owner should be on the contractor to protect his staff. You're hiring the contractor, and I agree with you 100% on that. Um, but you should also make sure that your contract outlines 
his responsibilities. Safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Safety and for him and his workers. Correct. And what yeah. and what you're not liable for because you know they love to say, well, there's there's you. <laughs> there's a new there's a new gaffing. Yeah. There's yeah. a new problem. There's a new problem that <laughs> <in> job. <laughs> there's a new gaff. Okay, I get back to so glad to be out of job, you know. Of course, you don't like some like liability, you know. They don't, nope. don't like some like liability nope. for anything. Quick. Quick to be told, but pull themselves out. yourself at any rate. <laughs> uh, the, this question is directed to you, Stefan. The real estate industry is growing exponentially. Um, and also, as a career option, I have some colleagues in, in the financial field that are interested in becoming real estate agents or going on that career line. What are some words of advice you would offer them uh, as they think about pursuing a career in, in real estate? Come on. Um, it's a great industry. You, you're you connected with so much like minds. You get to meet, meet great guys in industries that are like yours, but different. Um, you get to meet developers, home guys who are building your plans. Um, but what I love about the real estate brokerage industry is the freedom to operate in your terms. Um, if you, the reason that we went with Keller Williams, um, we were years on our own um, previous company, Real Estate Ghana, and um, we are, we were and still are the um, most following on social media in Ghana for real estate, exclusive real estate brokerage. And that's because, that's because we, our target market, the Guyanese. That feeling of assisting someone in acquiring a home <laughs> is amazing. Mm -hmm. Just right? seeing that smile. It's, it's amazing. When you, when you know that, let's say there's a signing today. You just want to take a drink for them. Exactly. <laughs> I have, I have Even if they want to take a drink. I've just been feel. to the courts where, where is, we should pass our, you know, operations, our, our job. But I've got, been to the courts, just see them sign over that transport, <laughs> right? And there's run, hug, you jump here because it's an amazing feeling. You know, just, and the industry is growing. I, 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 I recommend people, if you're interested, come on. It, it's, it's a great industry. Um, if you focus on that aspect, on satisfying your client, you, you'll do very well. You'll do very well. Is there any certification that you have to um, have before you become a player? Um, At Keller Williams Ghana, we train all of our agents, but yes, um, in order to sell properties in Ghana, you, you are required to be licensed by the Ghana Revenue Authority, um, which we will assist, which we assist all of our, um, our brokerage is licensed and we assist our agents in doing so. But we provide everything for them. The technology, the systems, the sales training. Um, it's, 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 it's an amazing industry. We're all in real estate here. It's, it's, it's great. So you would never walk about. Just to add to what Stefan said, I think that anyone in finance, anyone, even if you have a million dollars and you want to invest in real estate in them, go ahead. There's, Camera. Like I was explaining earlier, infrastructure, is our new major thing. You understand? Like, the first thing we all do in anything we do is put on a foundation. All right? In our lives, that's how we go to school. So if you, even if, like I said, even if you have that land and you can't afford to do much with it at the moment, you know, acquire. Really, if you Google right now how to be a millionaire, really stay there one to five. Definitely. In someone, I can't tell you if it's one to five, or five or three web. But the better. The better. Yeah. The things to do to be a millionaire, yeah. what to invest in, yeah. real estate is one to five, somewhere yeah. along the line. Your asset will never depreciate. And that's why it's, it's, it's good. almost a no brainer. On mm -hmm. the current state of Ghana, I think we should not even be thinking twice. It should never be an if. You shouldn't be thinking twice. Yeah. The sa one of the safest investments. Should you follow the right ways that we would have discussed earlier in the program? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. It's one of your safest investments because yeah. every when I travel a lot lately, everyone is asking me what to do in Ghana, what to do in Ghana. We see Ghana's moving so quickly. 
and I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you, I recommend real estate. Yeah. I even have my friends. I explain to all of them. I'm into apartments. I run these little vacations, and I advise every single one. I say, "Yeah, you some money. Let me renovate down seas by you. Mm-hmm. Let me do this because it's something. Even if you can't go and live there, even if you get a four thousand Guyanese per month for the, and you own your own home as a young person that can help pay your mortgage mm-hmm. or pay for your gas, your life. Four thousand more than you get in last month. Four thousand that you didn't get. There. <laughs> so you, even if you already own your own home. Mm-hmm. I would always recommend, you know, reach out to Kwan, let Kwan give you a nice plan for a little apartment or, or a little area for your kids to play. You know, these simple things of, of, of actually pushing an agenda because a lot of persons inherit homes from their families and stuff like that, and they don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You understand? You reach out to a professional. You reach out to a professional, yeah. they create a plan for you, and it can be, you don't, everything is not a tear though, mm-hmm. because sometimes, uh, curb appeal that, uh, for some buildings here are very amazing. You mm-hmm. should not tear mm-hmm. them. If you, I mean, we all have our own taste, but you can, you know, m- make it to your own liking and, and stuff like that to a point. But however, it also is a little cheaper sometimes to renovate versus tearing down. Let's say you would have outsourced the property privately, you know, and and that's not so bad. But like I said, invest in real estate. Even if you're young and you, 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 your cousin, your grandma living by yourself, you have CPL coming up. So, granny, we can make up this bed and we can rent it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Airbnb. So, yeah, I want to make sure you give granny some money. <laughs> <laughs> owning, owning a property, owning a home again, it shouldn't be um, a conversation. It should be a, how we can go about making this decision. There, <laughs> there's, there's a, Oh, the sad. The best time to buy real, real estate was ten years ago. The second best time yeah, is yeah, now. Yeah. No, <laughs> you can't. It's true. You know. Everyone can say, "Oh, the price is too high." We you think it could be next year. <laughs> Lower. It's, <laughs> you listen, gotta guys, make the decision now. So quickly, I would uh, advise anyone to just jump on any opportunity, legal yeah, opportunity that you can afford. <laughs> That's that you can afford. Right. And uh, just to touch on one one thing as it relates to home building. Please, homeowners, if you're going to build a home, stop worrying about what the outside looks like. Your objective should be able to be comfortable inside. Hmm. Yes, your house on your main road and the girl was walking by your office is driving a fucking walk. <laughs> if you don't have money to pay in the house inside, at least put in the toilet. Hmm. This is, I think this is a big problem a lot of homeowners do. They got a big fancy fence. And when you go inside the house, the bedroom and the doors, the kitchen is tired. <laughs> you they, they can't afford to drive the car you don't on the fence. <laughs> you understand? Focus on your home, security of the home itself. 90% of all estimates that contractors give do not include a fence on a bridge. Mm-hmm. It's just for the building. Mm-hmm. So if it's going to be for the building, Ensure that your building have lights, water, and full security for you and your family. Don't think about who can see and where you can talk about. Your conversation about your home should not be at work. It should be at home and you going to bed at night and feeling this sense of security and this sense of completion that you are in a comfortable space that you're able to afford at whatever cost that may be. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Some very important points, and it goes back to having uh, priorities and not being influenced by uh, external forces in terms of how you spend your money. Because, uh, like Golira said in the song, and I would always mention this some people are rich, and some people have rich looks. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't worry about the externals, fix the internals first, and then you could always. Um, Go back later and tackle the, um, the external aspect. Now, as we conclude the conversation, if there is any critical aspect about this process that I would have missed, um, if you guys want to uh, mention something that I probably would have missed. The only thing I would advise is don't try to do it yourself on your first go. Not everybody could be lucky like Enzo. <laughs> <laughs> I um 
learn from other people's mistakes, um, hire professionals. I, you, you can complain about the cost now, but you can complain way more later when you gotta, when you gotta fix it twice. Um, there are people out there who offer services like Cohen. There are people out there who have experience like Enzo. Um, it don't hurt to jump on the phone and say, you got five minutes next week, you got 10 minutes this weekend, let me get, let me get beer, I need some assistance here. Please help me, this is what I'm trying to do. I guarantee it will make life easier for you now and later. Okay. Yeah, when, yeah, for me, in, on, the, on the design aspect, right? I'm, I'm almost interested to design because these two guys, they got more experience. But um, we can do the What we can do the um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as it comes to the um, design aspect, right? If, if you're building your own home, right your home is a, a representation of you mm. all right you must have your characteristics all right when you you leave your workplace you must want to, to go home you, you must not want to go to work you, 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 you don't want to leave your home to go anywhere mm. because when you you build it, when you design this home it's it's how you want it to be now i'm trying to i'm saying all that to say that when you're in the design process you, you should ensure that you get exactly what you want because after the, this house is completed for you for you to make certain changes it might be difficult to impossible mm. so during, and i know that there are certain things that you should consider your budget and whatever and, and even when you're building you might have certain things that, that you want to change but in your mind you, you must have certain basic things that you you want to you, you know you, you want a, a big exactly come back to your list right it comes back to list exactly right because a, a pl- it's why a plan is important and a plan is not only a, a physical drawing a plan is uh, exactly start with, with a list of the things that you want all right and, uh, and with that being said right after you you, you have what have completed your house and whatever you must feel a sense of of achievement mm. all right and, and speaking on, on the house i'm speaking that if you have an apartment or whatever on speaking on your house specifically your house must be a representation of who you are and you must have characteristics based on the port, the kind of person that that you are so when you go into the, the design process ensure that you you speak i may not be the the architect but you go to the architect ensure that they they are patient because Somebody might come for a plan, and, and I can tell you from personal experience, I've spent on one client, I can tell you now, she, she's at the back of my mind. I've spent <laughs> a year working on, on her plan. Wow. Right? But for some persons, wow. right, I've done plan overnight for them. Yeah. Because they already know what, what they, they want. Wanted. Yeah. Right? So imagine I'm going through a year making changes and whatever. And the thing is it, she's not even in the country. Right, so it, it's difficult to, to 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 discuss certain things with her. And I mean, she, she she's very nice and friendly. But if you know what you want, it makes our work easier, because we, we can only give you options based on how we understand it. Yeah. But I can't read your mind. I don't know the, the, the colors that you want. I don't know the certain things that, that you want. All right. So if if you have it in mind, ensure that the 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 architect or the designer is willing to sit with you and spend time with you to discuss the things that you want. And then when you go to the contractor, same thing. Ensure that you explain to them, this is what I want, what's the best or the, the most suitable way of going about getting exactly what I want. Because when you finish again, your house must be a complete representation of who you are. Absolutely. <laughs> How's it All right. Um, one thing I think I really want to touch up, don't cost a big contract. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I don't buy the hand of video. Uh, yeah, buy, yeah, yeah. This is somebody creating a future. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's a mistake that a lot of homeowners make. And also, I mean, you can't question him on his decisions, but obviously, you chose him. He should be qualified to do his job, mm. and you should actually allow him to. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I agree. Your, I agree. If, if customers may have a disagreement yeah. or things are not going in the peace or a timely manner that they would like it to be, honestly, if you want the customer, go in the cafe. Mm. Do not show his workers that you have yeah, no respect yeah, yeah. for him. Because then his workers will then feel they can disrespect the contractor. 
then you leave in your whole work site in people that don't trust nobody <laughs> but themselves. <laughs> so I, I would just yeah. say in closing to be confident with your contractor. All right, be confident in him that he will be able to complete your job from start to finish. Secondly, approach your system. Whether you're going privately with Stefan or you're going to the housing area, or you're going to the court, approach it. As a Guyanese, I advise everyone to approach the idea of owning your own home. Yeah. Pretty much even before owning a car. Yeah. Approach the idea. Even if you can't do anything about it, have the idea. Mm -hmm. And this is a really good technique of a business person that I have, but I think it would work for anyone. Put it on a list and put in capital letters on your phone. If you get vexed, store it as your wallpaper. Mm. It can give you anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> and just because you're constantly reminded about it, you can act. You can act. Yeah. Because I know a lot of us are not very proactive and that's okay. But if we need to put a little measures in place to make us act, it's good. I think it's something that we are ignoring and Guyanese are not owning enough real estate in Guyana. And I think we really, really should. The resources are there. You can, like I said, Privately, you can go via uh, government, wherever one you want to go, approach the idea. And from there, we would have stated, I think we, I don't think we miss any really steps yeah. uh, this evening, but like I said, um, Cohen is doing designs, uh, I'm a developer, and then we have Stefan doing the direct brokerage real estate of it. You can go on any one of our uh, websites on our Facebook or Instagram pages. I'm sure any one of us are really open to having a phone call. Like Stefan would have rightly said, invite us to lunch, we like fancy food. <laughs> <laughs> we can give you free advice, nothing is wrong. Correct, we correct. Can, we can come and give it to you, especially if you are doing it for the first time. Absolutely. Please just reach out, you know, um, mistakes in this type of area are not always easy to come back from. Yeah. Because, like I said, if it's your first time, that means that it's all of your money that you actually have. And it's not really good for you to make that wrong decision at the beginning of everything, you know? So, yeah, really in closing, guys, people, please approach the idea of owning real estate. Thank you very much, guys. I, um, as somebody who is also interested in soon becoming uh, a first-time homeowner, I, I must say that I've been educated and I think I have a way better understanding now of how I need to approach uh, certain aspects of uh, the entire process. I, I want to encourage Guyanese and reiterate what Enzo uh, just mentioned. Begin to think about owning your own home and also begin to take the necessary steps to have that idea and that thought uh, become a reality. Uh, owning your own home is also a mechanism that you can use to create generational wealth for your family. Uh, that's also an important thing that we need to develop in our community. So I want to encourage you guys to uh, seek out good mentors, seek out good advisors. Uh, this investment is one you can't afford to, to mess up. Uh, your first home, millions of dollars that you worked hard for. You don't want to just throw it down the drain and then have to restart. Go through back all of those years of blood and sweat and tears. And, and you know, you mess it up. So ensure that you get all the necessary education. And as far as possible, please share this live stream with other young people, friends and family so that all Guyanese can benefit from uh, the education that we would have been privy to this evening. I want to encourage you guys to tune in back next week for another episode of Common Sense. And don't forget to, uh, you can purchase some Common Sense merch. We have a new a uh, line of merch that will be released uh, in, on Saturday. Some new hoodies, some new sweatshirts, some new jerseys. Uh, you can get those at OMU, located at Tower Street on Main Street. And uh, just want to encourage you guys to have a wonderful rest of the evening and don't forget to use your common sense.